Perfect. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to a weekly JS Core Dev Team Sync. I will be taking the, the place of Alan today. He's out on holiday. Um, hopefully, he'll be back next week. Um, with that, can I have a volunteer note taker? No? All right, Volker, I pick you. <laughs> okay, all right. We'll go ahead and kick it off then. Now that we have a note taker, Volker, thank you. Uh, doo -doo -doo. All right, and I will start. Um, so last week, I finalized some work to get pull Implex out the door. So that should be ready to go into JS IPFS um, so we can replace the PDP Implex. And then hopefully that probably won't end up living too terribly long with the async iterator work. Um, but that should see some performance boosts because um, it is a bit faster than the Implex. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Next. Um, message signing in PubSub. So go lib P2P is going to be uh, enforcing message signing. Um, they're going to be working that up the chain. Lytle, thank you for uh, finding that out and mentioning that to the JavaScript team. Um, so we went ahead and got message signing in place and we'll hopefully be doing a release of that tomorrow for JS once Splash goes back. Um, and then also did some CPU testing of the DHT on JS IPFS. I'll be doing more of that uh, this week so that we can um, finalize what config works best um, for the DHT being enabled. Um, this week I'll probably be working on also doing mess signing of validation of the signed messages. So right now we're doing kind of a phased release uh, with the PubSub message signing so that we can get the signing out faster. Um, but we'll do a subsequent release where we're actually doing the validation of the signatures so that we uh, make sure everything is good. Um, and then possibly I need to check priorities, but I should, we'll probably be looking at um, NAT traversal and better address announcing um, for JS lib P2P. And I think that is it. Does anybody have any questions? No, all right. Uh, Alan's notes, he's out, but he released a new version of the JS IPFS HTTP API. Uh, he is working on some things for the interface stream muxer for libp2p, uh, a few other async iterator items for JS libp2p as well. Um, the next this week, he'll be working on workshops for IPFS camp. If you have anything, any questions for Alan on any of those, feel free to reach out to him or ping him in one of those PRs. Uh, Dirk, not attending, uh, still in Australia, but I believe he'll be back next time for in NYC, so we should see him next week. Um, he's finished up the ref's local endpoint. He's got an RFC out for garbage collection and is looking for feedback, so if you're interested in garbage collection in JSIPFS, up over there, uh, take a look and provide feedback for him. Um, and then he'll be working on garbage implementation this week. Next up, Volker. So I've, I'm still working on the IPLD format stuff, but slowly it looks good. So now like I think 80% of the PRs are approved. So hopefully it's only the um, IPLD Ethereum one is missing, which is the hard one and um, the main JS IPLD thing, but hopefully it gets a review tonight, basically in the Australian time zone. And then tomorrow I will hopefully have, um, be able to, or oh, well, if I do the changes, but hopefully this week I should really be able to merge things, release things, and then um, the whole IPLD stack is um, a sink and a wait. Um, yeah. That's all I have. Great. Any questions for Volker? No. Oh, all right. Next up, Hugo. Hi guys. So what I've been doing, uh, I implemented the um, file DOM API support for the um, regular files API. Uh, on the HTTP clients, on JSIBFS core. Also did the 
corresponding inter interface tests. Uh, while doing this work, I created a, a new repo, which is still like in review. Uh, this repo basically aggregates some shared logic and dependencies for the IBFS ecosystem. We're still discussing if we're gonna go with it or just put the the stuff that that's there in in the interface repo. Uh, but basically, they are just um, utility functions um, uh, that get they get re-implemented all over the place uh, and having them there in a single place will help a lot um, uh, to avoid to avoid us to re-implement because uh, so re-implement some logic because I found out some re-implementation are not actually the, the same I found out a few problems with that. Um, yeah, we're still discussing it, but that should be figured out soon. And the DOM file API should get merged. I also added node 12 to the CI. We, uh, at least on, on the easier, other uh, repos, uh, it's kind of difficult because one of our dependencies doesn't really run on node 12. so. We need to figure out that also. Um, I did a big update on Azure. Updated every dependency, merged a bunch of uh, a bunch of requests that were uh, in the backlog. So a uh, major release should be out soon this week uh, for Azure. So get ready to do some changes in all your repos. Uh, uh, yeah, I also fixed the Electron um, example on uh, JSWFS. I also added support for running the tests uh, in the Electron environment. Electron basically has two types of environments, um, what they call the Electron main, basically the main process that is a, a node-like process and the um, renderer process. That's basically uh, the browser. So the pull request already open to add support for it. Uh, I'm still a little bit stuck uh, with this because uh, the bit swap tests don't actually, uh, the bit swap tests on JSWFS repo don't actually pass. Uh, because they need to connect to external nodes uh, and do some with stuff, but everything else uh, is passing. I just need to figure out how to change the tests to to be able to support the Electron, and then we will be able to run our tests in Electron environments, which will help a lot because we have some issues about it. Um, I also went back to the IPNS resolve uh, pull requests. Uh, clean those a little bit, add a few more fixes to uh, align with the Go implementation. Uh, right now, uh, I'm blocked on the on the JS IPFS uh, pull requests. You can see the Travis link on the blocked uh, section. Um, basically, is a test related to PubSub that why should not be related to my mode. Uh, if you guys could check it out, uh, it would be extremely helpful. Um, yeah, I know I'm also blocked uh, on a new Go IPFS release uh, because basically the last ones uh, broke the multiple files add and we re rely on that on several uh, tests. Basic, uh, especially on the HTTP uh, client repo, which tests against uh, Go IPFS. So we have a lot of tests failing. And right now, I have at least two PRs that I actually need the latest version of Go IPFS, but I can't use it because that version breaks all the tests. So it's, it's not easy to handle uh, uh, the tests right now. Uh, for the rest of the week, I'll be working on the PNS. Um, 
specifically uh, making the IPFS DNS recursive by default and the IPFS resolve recursive by default exactly as the latest version of co-IPFS. Any questions for me? Go ahead, Volker. Um, I just that um, I know that for the uh, uh, Node 12 stuff that um, the IPFS uh, repo doesn't work on uh, Node 12, but it should be a simple dependency update thing. But I basically looked into it, but then halfway through I didn't finish it. But <laughs> just if anyone has wants to have a look at it, um, it should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's a, one of our dependencies that doesn't actually support Node uh, 12 uh, native stuff because they change it. Uh, and either the maintainer of our dependency fix, fixes that stuff or we will need to do it or change yeah, the yeah, dependency. Yeah, the reports just the um, uh, level down or up uh, dependency, which has already a new version which supports it, but just needs to be, yeah. Bubble up all the changes. Any more questions for me? No. Cool. Thanks. Awesome. Next we go. Next up, Lytle. Uh, yep. So um, apart from holidays, I managed to add even more stuff to the PR with gateway improvements. And uh, in the meantime, Alan merged uh, upgrade uh, to new package name of Happy and uh, Joy, I think. So uh, I rebased on top of that. And now the PR is significantly smaller and easier to review. Uh, so uh, that would be very good if someone looked at it because it's uh, like hanging there and it's sort of like mm, blocking other work uh, that I have uh, killed uh, uh, and built on top of that. Um, I filled some upstream uh, PRs that are not really related to uh, JSIPFS, it's, but it makes it easier for JSIPFS to run in uh, basically Chromium apps and uh, web extensions in Brave. Uh, so I think happy one uh, got merged. Uh, I did not uh, add links yet, but uh, I'll probably add them uh, post this call. And I got uh, work in progress on getting, uh, basically getting a Wikipedia to load using embedded uh, gateway in Brave. And it's like related to multiple things. Somehow uh, there's like overlap with what uh, Hugo is doing with adding support for, for DNS link and generally like fixing uh, IPNS resolve in uh, JSIPFS, but also uh, Alex added uh, support for uh, sharded directories. Uh, and like I identified that that works for uh, immutable paths like uh, IPFS one, but we don't have any story or code that would support IPNS. And that's like prob the problem is that if we, a lot of people would just want to uh, find uh, cool uh, URLs to play with uh, embedded no gateway in Brave, and Wikipedia is like one of the first, uh, like the first choice, and it does not work right, right now for multiple reasons, like IPNS support, uh, DNS link. Uh, and also like uh, resolving sharded directories and picking the correct uh, uh, file to load. So that's like work in progress. And uh, I'll be continuing that, uh, that work uh, in this week. Uh, I hope to release a new uh, beta of uh, companion with embedded JS IPFS that is able to uh, load those things. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm basically using a JS IPFS fork uh, that has cherry picked uh, changes from multiple PRs until those changes uh, land upstream just to keep iterating and uh, don't get this work stale. And I also like when it sort of starts landing in JSIPFS, I want to add like interrupt tests for HTTP gateway that check, checks for all those like uh, added headers and other stuff. Cause we have like in interrupt suite for the API which is like checking if we don't uh, diverge uh, between JS and Go implementations, but for the gateway there, I don't think we have like the robust test suit. So I'll, 
probably we need to create one and this is a, like a good opportunity because I'm already in this uh, and I feel that's uh, that's it from me. Any questions? I was just checking out the embedded JS IPFS PR and it looks really cool. Uh, the DNS link stuff, there's a note about like using the Chrome sockets UDP API. Is that the plan for like you're going to issue DNS requests from the embedded node um, eventually? Is that, I'm just curious because that sounds really cool. Yeah, so like r right now, I think we are using basically uh, what regular JS IPFS running in web uh, sites is doing. So it's using uh, DNA, API v0 DNS endpoint at our public gateway uh, just to get it worked. Uh, but yeah, we have access to UDP, uh, like Chrome uh, UDP sockets API, and that would be used for, I, I believe we should be able to do DNS lookups uh, and also like local discovery, which is like also using like subspec of DNS. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's a really interesting PR. I like it. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Lado. Uh, next up, Jim. Uh, <clears throat> hi. So um, last week, um, I can't really remember what I did earlier in the week, but um, I did some more exp experimentation with um, the new HTTP signed exchanges. Um, I'd done some work with that last year and I'd gone to Google Tokyo and showed them um, my experiment of signing content and loading it using a um, service worker. Um, and uh, I'd let all my certificates expire and so I hadn't really played with it. And um, so the, Google's in the last week had been sort of interested in what we were doing again. And um, it's it's now been shipped into um, stable Chrome channel. So everybody in the world can use these things now. So um, I, I renewed my certificate and I got a, um, a wildcard certificate and I did some experimentation with that. And I also wrote a little, um, to test to see if I could make it work from using a web uh, web extension instead of a service worker, and that that sort of worked. So it was sort of neat. So um, I, I I was doing it as framed as one of these mini projects I'm trying to organize, um, but it hasn't actually been green greenlit yet, so I haven't put too much more effort into it. Um, but good news is I'm going to I'm going to see. Um, the spec writer for the HTTP sign exchanges and web package in Portland, because I'm in Portland this week for CSV conf, and I'm gonna meet a bunch of people. Um, and so I'll be able to trade notes. Um, I, <coughs> I didn't realize it previously, <coughs> but this is actually Google's core reasoning behind doing all this work is to support the peer-to-peer -peer use case. So I think it would be very interesting for us to talk to them. So um, AMP is sort of like what they can deploy with it now, but they're actually very strongly interested in the peer-to-peer -peer issue or how to do peer-to-peer -peer for real. Like, but it's a very difficult issue for them to do because that, they really have to take into account reader privacy. And I, I dove in a little bit on uh, what the controversy between Mozilla and Google has been with regards to um, certificates and modifying SSL to cover the peer-to-peer -peer use case, and that's unresolved. So, um, that so this week I'll just be, really yeah. The, I, I added um, some comments on the um, <clears throat> uh, the IPF and IP. IPFS in web browsers issue 121, which is just sort of epic. And uh, I linked to the, there's a really interesting IETF video from the last IETF meeting where the um, Jeffrey from Portland here and one of the guys I met in um, Tokyo are at the, at the conference and they're presenting their stuff. And um, Eric Skorla from um, 
He's the CTO of <coughs> Firefox, and he's also the guy behind Let's Encrypt and um, a lot of the crypto things. And uh, he's very strongly opposed to it. He, he, he let them have it, like right in the IETF meeting. So it's sort of inter interesting to watch that. You can just see live um, the debate. And um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the current um, signed exchanges are going to, like Google has purposely put like a seven day limit on the certificates just because they don't want to make it into the standard. So I think they're going to want to, there's, it's going to be a, a lot of work, I think, um, at the standards level to try to push forward the peer-to-peer -peer use case. So um, I'll learn more about it this week, hopefully. Great. Any questions for Jim? No? All right. We have five minutes left. It doesn't look like there are any cross-team updates. Did anybody want to give one? Terry? Um, I will just, yeah, I'll just say that since it's written down as being workshop building week for camp, please let me know if you have questions about Proto School tutorials as part of your workshops um, in the Proto School uh, repo. You can find an issue for creating a new tutorial proposal so we can start chatting about what those sections of your workshop might look like if you're doing that. But don't hesitate to reach out. Wanna? Great. We'll probably uh, probably be reaching out to you this week from the the PDB chat stuff. So, uh, Lytle, do you have an update? Um, one update on the um, signed exchanges is that uh, in the same issue that uh, Jim posted uh, like thoughts and comments, uh, I also uh, posted an update that our public gateway is now exposing like send, r returning uh, signed exchanges with correct header so there are no errors anymore in the latest Chrome and every, everyone can as long you, as you like either purchase the certificate or got a signed exchange file uh, you can like play with it and uh, with the Chrome 74 I think or latest and there's a question in the chat and that's all and Hugo will get to you after we'll hit Kumavis's question Hi, this is uh, Kumavis uh, from MetaMask. I'm sort of an outside contributor. Uh, we're building a browser-like client for Ethereum uh, with LoB2B. And so my primary question is the async endeavor. It's awesome. It's amazing. It's very exciting. It's also simultaneously absolutely terrifying uh, because it is uh, you know, a larger factor of you know, about 80 modules that is frequently um, blocking other ongoing development, or at least conflicting with ongoing development, and uh, blocked by dependencies. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of a scary and exciting thing. Uh, so so uh, one approach that I'm interested in is a sort of um, incremental internal um, refactors into async await. Uh, so like without breaking external API, moving to async await, and uh, you know, while this sounds good because you can merge them quickly and you don't have to worry about like dependency breaking, it does maybe it moves the base platform compatibility like you're moving up to Node 10 from Node whatever, uh, or you're or you're changing browser comp compatibility. So I just want to learn more about like how does this approach sound and how are we dealing with the sync endeavor instead of uh, besides just like hoping everything refactors nicely all at the same time. Yeah, so it would be great if Alan was here because I know he has a lot of opinions on this. Um, but we can also follow up in the async issue in JSIPFS. Um, but to target your question on like doing like the massive sweeping changes versus incrementally doing it. So initially we had a conversation, um, a one-off video a while back, and we had decided that for like the smaller repos we would do the holistic refactors because they're they're quick and easy and not not very painful. Um, but I know you've been poking around in the DHT, and that is a very large unwieldy thing that is also moving very quickly now. Um, so I am also on board with making for things like JSIPFS, libp2p, 
um, switch, the DHT. I think those are things that, especially if we're doing active work on doing large sweeping changes, is going to be, it's going to get increasingly difficult the further along in progress we get. So I think we're going to have to, if we want to do it reasonably, we're going to have to do incremental changes to some of those things. Cool. That that makes a lot of sense to me, and I really support that. Um, how do we? Uh, what's the like official stance on like platform um, stability and platform support? So yeah, so we actually dropped um, everything below Node ten a few months ago. Was that last year? I forget when it was, um, but it was a while back um, that we actually officially dropped it because we knew we were moving to to async await. Okay, great. Um, okay, so so then, uh, as you may or may not be aware, I do have one specific tiny PR uh, in DHT, and that's just more like a model of what I want to bring to a bunch of different repos and 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 in more parts of the DHT as well, if if that makes sense. Um, so very happy to contribute uh, small incremental factors towards async refactor. Yeah, if you want to reach out in the JSIPFS issue, um, we can follow up there, um, and Alan will be back tomorrow, um, so we can sync up again there too. Uh, we appreciate all the help with that and all the help that you've already given to the P2P and IPFS. So. You got it, great, thanks, I'll, I'll pick it up there. All right, we are at time, so I'm gonna let everybody go. If you need to go, feel free to leave. Wait, wait. Say bye, and then who go? Quick one. Yeah. Molly, uh, I can, can't go to the Go meeting. Can you um, think there about making a new release of YPFS because of the uh, multiple files uh, thing that is broken in the current one because it's okay. blocking us uh, badly now? Just that. Thanks. Okay. I will, I will call out that, that tiny thing if someone else <laughs> also wants to hop over to the Go YPFS call. It's starting right now. Um, and can continue to make that point uh, even more eloquently than I will. Thanks. Okay, bye everybody.